I would have never, ever stolen from other people. And the fact that he did what he did, I carry his shame with me. And I'll carry that shame with me probably every single day for the rest of my life. When Jennifer Robertson first met Gerald Cotton, he was already building a virtual gold mine, convincing people it was so easy, so safe to jump into the Bitcoin market, even a child could do it. Now put in the money. But where did that money go? I hadn't understood how Quadriga um, had held money in the first place. I thought it was just a trade. Uh, so there was many things about Quadriga that I didn't understand. Amy, how are you? Investigative journalists Amy Castor and Takara Small have spent years following and reporting on the Quadriga scandal. Cotton was operating Quadriga like a Ponzi scheme. So whenever people put in their money into the exchange, he sort of used it as his personal slush fund. Gerald had been using money to buy planes, to purchase homes, um, to take care of his two dogs, which ironically, he left them $100,000 in his will. But Robertson benefited too. She and Cotton traveled all over the world. She started Robertson Nova, managing more than a dozen properties bought with his money. Early on, she was also processing funds, acting as a funnel for customer money on Quadriga's behalf, all the while maintaining she knew little about the company's inner workings and did largely as she was told. I mean, people were literally showing up at Jerry's house with duffel bags full of money. She was surrounded by cash at, at all times. And I think the question would have been, did you ever have any questions about how this business operated. She was seeing the inner workings of the company. She was right there with them physically day after day. So she saw the money coming and going. And it's like, this is it. It's hard when you like add everything up in the end and kind of think, but two, I also trusted him. Like I just, he was the nicest, caring, most loving husband. He was my best friend. You know, I, I think I was, it's a possibility that I was wearing rose colored glasses. At the time, you thought this is just the way a perfectly legitimate business operates? Jerry explained that it wasn't illegal to um, mail out cash under a certain amount. And he said that he also was registered with FinTrack and following all the rules. You know, it, ma it made sense to me. But did it though? I mean, it, I, I guess I just wonder if, if any of that seemed fishy to you at the time. Um, I understood that the banks were very anti-Bitcoin, and so therefore they had run into some difficulties with the banks accepting cash. Did it ever occur to you that he might be breaking the law? It never occurred to me. But with Bitcoin prices crashing in 2018, investors became suspicious when their money was slow to withdraw. With almost no regulatory oversight, the illusion of Quadriga as a stable, liquid company began to unravel. Then, a devastating turn. Cotton died suddenly while on a trip to India, complications with Crohn's disease. And because he was running the whole operation from his encrypted laptop, it meant the money was gone. One man had the keys to hundreds of millions of dollars and it's like, like the CEO of a bank dies and then you learn later that he's the only one that had access to the money and nobody else can get it. And not only that, but then when you take a closer look, you realize that he actually spent <laughs> most of it and gambled it away. But his death was kept a secret and Quadriga continued to accept deposits. It was only a month later, Jennifer Robertson notified investors. House, this Canadian this. claimed to have lost half a million and, uh, dollars. Yeah, I got burned for it. So no one knew that the CEO was going to die mysteriously in India. Um, and then there's Michael Perklin. He met Cotton at a cryptocurrency did. meetup, became All fast friends, you, you and eventually well an investor. I lost four that. figures. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot. But amongst my friends and family uh, who I recommended Quadriga to, if you were to add up all of their losses, it would be well into the seven figures. More than a million dollars. Yes. I. I'm so sorry that this happened to you and people are still going to be angry with me. I know that, but you no, know, I, I really did everything that I could to help. And I have suffered and cried and I have not had it easy 
since the day Jerry died, trying to sort a mess that wasn't mine. There is one more thing that I think investors think you can help with, and that is finally putting to rest the question over whether Gerald did actually die. Uh, you're nodding your head. You know what I'm talking about, right? Exhuming the body. Um, that's a, an important topic. It's important because everything about and leading up to Cotton's death was unusual. Cotton and Robertson's will, drafted just days before his death. Cotton's death certificate, days later, misspelled his last name. The funeral, closed casket. There's no evidence Gerald Cotton is still alive, but the questions never stopped. Do you think Gerald Cotton might still be alive? Well, <laughs> you could certainly forgive Quadriga investors for thinking that way. Do you think that Gerald Cotton might still be alive? That's a tough one. Um, I have no evidence that he's still alive. And as far as the people who have seen his body and have seen the death certificate uh, say, he is gone. But is he the kind of person who could orchestrate that? Uh, everything that I knew about Jerry seems to have been a lie. But looking at the information that I do know now, I do think he'd be the type of person who could orchestrate that. I think exhuming the body would... Gerald's body. Gerald's body would mean a lot. Well, some people think Gerald is still alive somewhere. He's on a beach sipping a Mai Tai. He's benefiting uh, from all of the millions that were stolen from investors. And exhuming the body would be a really huge step. Um, it would be a form of closure for some people. Is that something you would ever allow? So it's not something I would stand against if there was evidence that it would um, return money or it would help. I saw Jerry die. I was holding his hand when he passed away. It was a terrible, terrible moment. What is it that you most want people to know right now? Yeah, I just I just really hated the questions. Like, it seemed like I should have known. I, I've already said it a million times. I don't know. Like, so that's, that's anything else. It's just, you know. Yeah tired of defending myself for something I didn't do. And I understand there's been so many people hurt. It has been the most unbelievable pain that I could ever imagine. These three years have been so hard. <laughs>